To get started, let's go over some basic camera controls for navigating the battlefield. To move the camera, hold down the right mouse button and drag the cursor in any direction. Move the camera now. Excellent. Objective complete. Throughout this training session, you can reference your objectives at any moment if you're having trouble figuring out what to do next. To access your objectives, click the flashing button in the top right of the screen. Next, we'll work on commanding units. We've granted you two squads of zone troopers. Begin selecting these units by moving your cursor over the zone troopers. Notice that your cursor changes to a selection cursor. While your cursor is over the unit, left click. Excellent. One squad of zone troopers is now selected. You can select multiple squads of units by left clicking and dragging the mouse across them. Try selecting both squads of zone troopers by dragging a selection box across all of them. Both squads are now selected. To move selected units, move your cursor over empty terrain. You'll notice that it changes to a move cursor. This is a potential destination for your selected units. Some terrain, such as mountains and rivers, are not traversable and will give you a different cursor to inform you that you're not allowed to move units there. Issue a move command to your zone troopers into the designated area to the east by right-clicking on the terrain. Good work. Your troops are moving out. This is the shooting range. Time for some target practice. If your zone troopers are still selected, right-click on the targets downrange and the zone troopers will fire on them. If your troops aren't selected, drag a box around the whole group and then open fire. Destroy all of the targets. All targets are destroyed. Excellent work, Commander. Notice that one of your zone trooper squads has a special symbol hovering above it when it is selected. This squad is now a veteran squad. There are three levels of veterancy. As squads rank up, they deal more damage and become less vulnerable to enemy attacks. Now move your zone troopers over to this damaged building. Order your men to destroy the structure. Oh yeah! Notice it took your men significantly longer to destroy the structure than the targets at the range. Zone troopers are very effective against infantry and light vehicles, but are not very efficient at destroying structures. In turn, certain tanks and heavy artillery may tear through structures, but may not be the most effective weapons against infantry. You'll need to pick the right unit for the enemy you're facing. Troop composition is an important part of commanding an army. Many units have special abilities. The zone troopers, for example, can use jump jets to boost themselves over obstacles and across rivers. Order your zone troopers to jump jet across this trench by selecting your zone trooper squads and left-clicking on the jump jets icon in the lower part of the unit portrait. You'll find it in the bottom right of your screen. Then left-click on a section of open terrain on the other side of the trench. Check it out. Time to go. Moving. Let's go, troopers. Hit it! Good work. Many units have special abilities and upgrades that you can use to great effect on the battlefield. Objective complete. Got it. Commander, you've been issued a Mobile Construction Vehicle, or MCV. This vehicle is the foundation for a new base and will allow you to build new structures. In the field, you'll be moving your MCV to a suitable area for base construction. 
Look for flat terrain. We've designated an area for you in this training simulation. Move your MCV to the designated area to begin base construction. Note that this large vehicle is defenseless and moves slowly, but it's heavily armored. What's the call? Let's You'll need to unpack the MCV before you can build a base. To do so, select your MCV and left-click on its unpack ability, again found at the lower right attached to the unit portrait. This will convert your MCV into a stationary structure called a construction yard. Good work. By unpacking your MCV, you've established ground control and can now place additional structures in the vicinity of your construction yard. Additional structures will extend your ground control, allowing you to expand your base to cover more ground. Your base will need power to function. Begin the construction of a power plant by left-clicking on the power plant icon in the build menu. Good. Notice how your remaining credits decrease while the power plant is building. Each structure has a cost and build time associated with it. To find out how much a building costs and how long it'll take to build, move your mouse cursor over the building's icon in the build menu. The building is now ready. Note that the power plant button is highlighted, indicating that it's ready to be placed in the world. Left-click the power plant build button and move your cursor onto the terrain. The cursor will switch to a power plant icon and may be placed within the construction yard's build radius. Left-click to place the structure. If the power plant icon turns red, you're either trying to build the power plant outside of your construction yard's ground control radius, or you're trying to build it on impassable terrain. Good, now your base has power. Notice the power meter on the right side of your screen. Each structure you build needs power to work properly. If your base runs low on power, some buildings will stop working and others will work inefficiently. Buildings that stop working turn black. Now it's time to build a refinery so you can harvest Tiberium. Building. Tiberium is an extremely valuable resource that can be refined and used to fund your operations. Build a refinery by clicking on the refinery icon. When it's ready, place your refinery in the same way you did your power plant. 